Nine months later with the M1 Mac Mini, and yes, it has been a nine months to remember, baby. Let's talk about exactly why and what I wanna update you guys and tell you about my experience since using this since launch of November of last year until this very point, which is nine months later. Let's talk about the M1 Mac Mini. All right, so what do you get when you pick up a M1 Mac Mini? Now this is the base model, which I'm getting the M1 processor. I got eight terabytes of uh, RAM, eight core, GPU, CPU, blah, 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 two Thunderbolt, three ports, a HDMI, two USB-A ports, a headphone out, the ethernet plug, power cable, and that's about it. That is the whole kit and caboodle. Oh yeah, an internal fan. Might I add, all for just $699 from Apple, player. <laughs> can you believe that? I can't. And if you go refurbish, you can get this bad boy around $549. This exact model, yes, $549. I did not stutter. If you go refurbished, if you go brand new, $699. But best value. I'm gonna tell you why. Before we get into all of the good and the sweetness about it, let's talk about the cons. The biggest con with this N1 Mac Mini is it does not come with a display or monitor, meaning you have to purchase that. Now, if you aren't lucky enough to already own a monitor, then you have to buy a monitor. So that adds in addition to the cost of this machine. Now, depending on what type of monitor you go for, how conservative, how pro, or how Apple-ish you try to choose within your monitor, that price point can rise quickly. So me personally, I use the LG 5K 2K display, which is an expensive monitor, has HDR 400, I believe on it. It's an ultra wide 34 inch. It has just that pro essence that I need because I like accurate colors for my color grading and video editing. But that's just me. You don't have to go that route. You can get a more than capable monitor for a more than capable price point, which adds to the value of this here M1 Mac Mini. And if you already got a monitor, end of discussion. Now there's another con to any of the M1 uh, Apple computers, and that's the lack of ports. Now, yes, you get two Thunderbolt 3 and two USB-A's, but if you're a tech nerd like me, you go beyond that. You got the Ethernet cable and HDMI and all that. This has a pretty solid, uh, you know, UIO port on the back. But <laughs> let's be honest. Me personally, what did I use in combination with this? The Cal TS3 Plus. Now, this is on the higher end of the Thunderbolt 3 docks, but a Thunderbolt 3 dock it's necessary if you need to expand your I.O. ports, especially to do it efficiently and the most capable way, Thunderbolt 3 ports is the way to go. Now, there are some USB-C ones out there that are cool and everything, but I like the Thunderbolt 3 ports. The CalDigit TS3 Plus serviced all of my needs. I got the SD card reader that I didn't have. <laughs> I got so many USB 2.0 points, uh, uh, ports, sorry. I got even more USB-C ports, two more. I got another Thunderbolt 3 port. I had a display port out. I had an ethernet cable plug in there. I had audio. I have it all in the CalDigit TS3 Plus. So if you want to get that for your M1 Mac Mini as well. I'll leave a link down in the description below to all the things I'm gonna talk about. But let's talk about this bad boy right here. So that is a con, that is gonna cost you more money if you need more ports, but here's the thing, it's worth it. Why is it worth it, CJ? <laughs> let's start talking about the pluses, player. Now, the biggest pro to this here, M1, let me, let me dust off your shoulder, player. The biggest pro to this M1 Mac Mini coming in at just $699, the base model, yes, I have the base model right here, is this thing crushes any and everything, the majority of all things that you can throw at it. Now, previously to this, I was running on my iMac Pro, which is a $5,000 machine. This thing is crushing things. This thing is crushing in Final Cut Pro, 4K editing, multi-stream 4K, threads, a lot of layers, all of that goodness in the base model better than my $5,000 iMac Pro. <laughs> if that doesn't tell you how great the M1 processor is, then I don't know what else to tell you, player. Like, I mean, I, I literally just told you this machine for $700 is running more better and efficiently than my $5,000 uh, Mac purchase. Yeah, man. I'm gonna cry about that off the screen, off the camera. Yeah, we go to, let, let's move on to the next thing because I don't even want to think about that. Another Big pro for me, nine months later, in my nine months of use, I am able to transition this M1 Mac Mini base model into becoming my high-end gaming streaming PC. Basically, I have a high-end built 
gaming PC. If you guys haven't seen that video, I'll link it as well. It's an over $3,000 build that I've been expanding and I like to stream my high end, high frame rate gameplay. Well, typically on that level, you need a custom PC or another PC strictly for streaming. Well, I didn't get a PC strictly for streaming. I got an M1 Mac Mini and this is handling it just like a champ. And let me put this in your mind just for a quick comparison. I have a MacBook Pro spec out 16 inch and I used it for streaming once and it did not no way in any way compare to how smooth and how quiet <laughs> This M1 Mac Mini performed when using it as my streaming device. I get no drop frames. I can stream, I can record all of my gameplay as well as I don't have to listen to the fan scream and yell at me because of the over inefficient Intel built MacBook Pro uh, of the past. And speaking of MacBook Pros, I just made a purchase. I went back to grab the M1 MacBook Pro 13 inch as my new editing machine to replace this M1 Mac Mini, which is moving over to my streaming PC. So we gotta give you thoughts. I'm gonna make a video and tell you why I would even transition or why I would ditch the M1 Mac Mini, which I'm telling you right now is so great for a M1 MacBook Pro. Stay tuned for that video. So here it is. At the end of the day, the main points I really wanted to get across in this video is to sing praises and to give true proper like notice of the M1 Mac Mini. This bad boy, if you wanna build it out, you can and you can still get a value. If you need 16 gigabytes of RAM for your, you know, your tasks and things like that, which technically I do, but I'm able to get by on the eight gigabytes. I had to test it and push it to its limits and I have. But you can add 16 terabytes, you can add storage, or I like to use external storage. I use a lot of these SanDisk Extreme Pros I just edit on those and dump onto those. And then I have larger uh, hard drives that I like to send the larger files just for storing. So you are able to run this thing in its base format and literally crush more than you would possibly think. So this is a great computer, a great value buy into the Mac OS system, which always has been held at a premium price tag for entry, which is no longer the case with this $699 machine. So if you got your eye on it and you're thinking about it, I say go for it. And if you wanna trick it out, if you wanna add more RAM and add more storage, go for that as well. But either way you go, you can grab this 699 one, but you gotta be mindful, it's only 256 gigabytes of onboard, onboard storage, so you need external storage to dump to, which is another price, but that's cheaper than buying it here with Apple. You know what I mean? If you wanna hit the little minutes point of the 512 internal, blah, 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 I don't know, build it, however fits your budget. But also look at the refurbish. This one in this configuration refurb is $548.99 or something, $549. You can't beat that. And then you can get 16 gigabytes at, for like $799 and you can get bigger. You can get like the whole kit and caboodle in the refurb if you wanna go that route. But even if you don't go that route, you wanna buy your tech brand new like how I like to typically do, you can grab this here machine and you can handle a lot. Just be mindful of the decisions you make when you configure it, because there's no going back. But just know that you can configure an M1 Mac Mini confidently and enjoy your tech purchase. My name is CJ, this is CJ Unplug, where I like to help you make more informed, realistic tech decisions, period. That's all, that's all it's about, you know what I'm saying? But anyways, at the end of the day, this M1 Mac Mini is pretty good. We're gonna call Tim Apple real quick. Tim Apple Player. I know, long time no hear from me, huh? Right, right, right. Listen, man, uh, this M1 Mac Mini is phenomenal. Now, as I told you in the last video from a while back, like, you know, I got stuck with this iMac Pro. How, can, can I return it? Yeah, it's some years old, but man, listen, bro, the M1, hello? Hello? Tim Apple, don't do me like this. At least I was able to get this for only 700. <laughs> but this still, $4,300 living into an iMac Pro. I put in work, you know I'm up to get it. Early bird gets the worm and the Yankee fitted. Like, whoa, bags under my eyes, and you know, won't complain, I'm tired, I'm on go. For that grip, ten toes to they swole. For that grip, ten toes to they swole. Remember those days, those L's, I couldn't sleep right now. I get paid, vacay, I'm staying beside. Breaking the blues over steak, I gotta eat right. You could be my peace sign.